So anytime you have some sort of thumbhole deployment, right, what I found, and this is not rocket science, but uh, especially for newbies out there, right, typically when you have some sort of thumb deployment, it's very hard to find. This guy is super duper sharp and for a tiny knife, right, and it's small but mighty. Look at that. Okay, you guys are just gonna have to take my word for it. There was one time I got really lucky and I reverse flicked this guy, but now it's not wanting to cooperate. Hello and what's going on guys? So welcome back to the channel. My name is Miguel and today we're gonna be reviewing the CRKT. I know, I know you can reverse flick this guy. It's not the most comfortable way, but it is possible. I just did it a second ago. Oh my goodness. This is a CRKT Pete. I know it's uh, spelled oddly there, P-I-E-T, but it's pronounced Pete. This is a Jesper Boxness design out of Denmark. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be... Um... Bruh. So the CRKT Pete, right? This guy, this is still a budget king this year, right? Is this still hanging on up there with all the budget options out there? It is often in special with the Blade HQ at only $15. Such a great, nice budget little EDC. So throughout the video, we're gonna go ahead and answer that very question. Uh, we compared it recently to the Civivi Centilia. Uh, the review for this guy is also live on the channel. Check out the description, right? And the cards right here in the top right, if you wanna check that out. It is uh, gonna be on the smaller size. This guy's gonna have a thumb hole so that's the slow opening right there look at that slow opening or you could uh, I guess if you get real good at it really fast there you go if you do like a sideways motion right there you could deploy it very quickly I'm trying not trying to get that there you go just like that right so what are we dealing with with this guy so we have some glass reinforced nylon GRN uh, type of scales for this guy they're in black they have this like orange peel type of pattern to it you know kind of like drywall in your house type of like ruggedness it helps with the grip quite a bit especially being uh, GRN right glass reinforced nylon uh, this guy is a liner lock right so yep liner lock right there part of the liner also helps lock the blade in place like that okay and then as far as the blade right this is going to be a stainless steel acr 18 mov should have a decent corrosion resistance and should be very easy uh, or decently easy to sharpen let's get some uh, overall measurements on this guy this guy is going to be about six and a half inches long uh, maybe a little bit under six and a half inches the cutting edge is going to be two and a half two and a half inches and three and a quarter or three and three quarters for the overall blade size the cutting edge two and a half inches whereas the whole blade is going to be two and three quarters the handle is going to be a whopping three and i want to say three and three quarters overall uh yeah three and uh yep three and three quarters yeah more than three and a half right there three and three quarters on the handle this guy likes to dance on the table look at that anytime he touches the table it makes a dance look at this dude <laughs> all right let's do some size comparisons there it is next to the pair of three the here is the uh pm2 and keep in mind um comparing it to these knives because these are the standard comparison knives in the channel right uh definitely a lot smaller than both of these um <laughs> they're smaller than the pair of three and definitely smaller than the pm2 for sure let's check out the ad 20.5 denko brothers right here we have the uh drop point blade and here is the shark's foot blade right there for your comparison right let me know also let me know if you like the uh zoomed in angle right here right typically i keep it one angle throughout the whole video but if you guys like this zoomed in angle more definitely let me know in the comments this guy is going to be way smaller than obviously both of the denko ad 20.5s but again just comparing them there for consistency purposes since that's what we compare them to every single time we do a review also comparing them to the same cut brothers here here is the crawly right there at the top that's a obviously much larger medium to larger knife so is the sexy so the pete crkt pete is going to be smaller of course and then last but not least let's compare it to the rat model one right there's the rat model one and here's the rat model two i want to say even the rat model two which is this smaller brother this guy right here even the p is smaller than that right definitely smaller than the model two and yeah let's not even compare it to the model one because uh, this thing is on a whole different category this i'm yet to find a knife in uh, my whole collection as of the moment that is bigger than the rat model one that's how big this guy is right here let's do some uh more comparable comparisons uh -huh. yeah, comparable comparisons here it is next to the Civivi Centilia, right? It is definitely very comparable to that guy. And I know it's not necessarily as small as the Elemental, but the Elemental is probably the next 
smaller knife, um, you know, smaller to medium knife there, uh, runner up in my collection. So there's a good uh, comparison right there for you. So a quick folded profile right there, right? Once it's folded in your pocket, right? Compared to the Elementum, right? It's gonna be a little bit thicker than the Elementum, but not by much, definitely. Um, a lot slimmer than the Centilia. Centilia there, it's uh, a lot wider. Comparing it to, we're, we're kind of going in reverse order here, right? So comparing it to the Ontario Brothers, the Ontario Rap Model 1, <laughs> that one's gonna be way uh, wider, but it definitely compares to maybe a little bit wider than the Rap Model 2 uh, down here. Next to the Senka Brothers, right? Uh, the Saxi, which is this guy here, is gonna be a little bit wider. The Crawley is gonna be the more comparable one of the two right there. Right on the width. All right, here are the Demco brothers, and there you go, guys. See it for yourself. Yep, definitely uh, much slimmer, much narrower than the Demco 8020.5s, regardless of the blade shape. And here we are with the Spider Co. Spider Co's are always going to be the, the thicker ones to um, you know compare them to because of the Spidey hole, right? That circle hole that's very unique, very um, specific to Spider Co. That's going to make them a lot wider. And the peat right here, right? I mean, even with the thumb hole, right? The thumb hole. It's still very slim compared to these other guys right, while we're here let's do a quick uh, profile right here it is a uh, carry profile it is probably just as thick as the pm2 compared to the para 3 para 3 right there yeah very comparable about the same comparing it to the demco brothers right the demcos are um, 80 20.5 or especially the describery uh frn are going to be a little bit slimmer you can see it there for yourself next to the Senkot saxi all right the saxi is going to be a little bit uh, thicker next to the Crawley, right? The Crawley is also going to be a little bit thicker next to the Ontario Rap Model 1. Yeah, this guy is just going to be way thicker for sure. And next to the Ontario Rap Model 2, it's uh, more comparable to the Rap Model 2, no doubt about that. And uh, the Pete might be a hair thicker than the Rap Model 2. Next to the Elementum, right there, all right, might be a little bit thicker than the Elementum, it's just a hair. And here it is next to the Centilia. Here it is next to the Centilia. Take a look. All right, probably about the same thickness right there. Yeah, same thickness as the Centilia. Let's do a quick hardware check on this guy. By the way, guys, the tools that I do use, links will be in the description. They are part of the Strabito tool set. Uh, it's very affordable, very reliable. Check them out on the affiliate links below. Uh, they do help out the channel. Highly recommend them, and that is at no extra cost to you. Um, let's take a look at this guy. I want to say uh, it does have a probably a TA in the pivot. Let's see if that is the case. All right, yeah, TA in the pivot. No doubt about that. And I want to say very similar to the Savivis, right? It's going to probably be t6 all the way around right t6 yeah and the handle uh these are recessed screws in the pocket clip which are very very nice and they are t6 as well i want to kind of try a t7 there just for you know fair measurement and yeah the t7 is going to be too big so again to summarize t6 everywhere else except the pivot the pivot is going to be t8 let's get a quick blade stock thickness on this guy all right this guy is going to be on the thickest point is going to be point 12.12 inches, right? And on the slimmer end, on the very, very tip, is gonna be 0 0.02, right? 0 0.02 right there. Try it again, 0 0.02 right there on the very, very tip. Let's get a quick weight measurement on this guy here, really quick. Let's see, my guess, all right, for comparison purposes, right? The Centilla, Savivi Centilla was 2.8, right? I wanna say this guy might be 2.9, right? That is gonna be my guess. Also the Elementum, by the way, for reference, is gonna be 2.8, right? So this guy, I wanna say my guess, 2.8, 2.9. Look at 2.5, 2.5, so 2.5 ounces, yeah, definitely a lot uh, lighter than some of the other guys. I think the GRN has something to do with it as well. All right, let's talk the experience on this guy, right? So of course you have only one deployment option and one deployment option only on this guy. You have no flipper, no button. So this thumb hole here is your only option. So you could either open it like that with a quick open, right? Or you could take it slow, right? It's just gonna enjoy the opening right there with the thumb hole. But yeah, that thumb hole is gonna be your only deployment <laughs> option on this guy, uh, which, you know, is gonna be uh, a let down for me personally. Now, if you're really into thumb holes, that's fine. But I kind of would have liked some other type of um, deployment option. And you're probably thinking, okay, Miguel, well, you can probably reverse flick this guy. Well, actually you cannot, right? Because you see the indentation that you have on this side 
is completely missing on the other side, right? So that indentation there, which helps you do the thumb deployment on the right hand, right? If you were left-handed, right? I know they have the reverse pocket clip, which is very nice. So they have that for left-handed people. But if you're left-handed, I mean, how are you possibly, I mean, you're really gonna struggle a lot to get that working the same way that you do on the other side. I mean, how much more difficult would it have been to make an indentation, like how much more difficult would it have been to make the same indentation on this end? And I know you're probably thinking, okay, well, Miguel, it gets in the way of the liner lock, right? Well, maybe make the liner lock a little bit indented as well, you know, kind of play around with the design a little bit. But hey, you know, I'm not a knife designer, although maybe one day I will, who knows? Right? I always dream about being one, <laughs> we'll see. But uh, that being said, that's probably my only gripe with that with this guy. Yeah, that's probably my only gripe right now is the fact that, yeah, the reverse opening right here on this guy, it's very, very sketchy. Yeah, it's not, not even, it is so unpredictable. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, that's that's not happening at all whatsoever. So again, you got uh, glass reinforced nylon GRN handles here, right, in this nice whippy pattern. And the blade is going to be a drop point, right, drop point blade, uh, ACR 18 MOV, uh, stainless steel, uh, very corrosion or somewhat decent corrosion resistance, and it should be nice to sharpen when the time comes. It is on this satin finish, and uh, yes, you can see with the thumb opening back and forth, uh, this is gonna be a fingerprint magnet for sure. All your fingerprints are gonna be there constantly, so you're gonna have to give it a wipe down every once in a while, or at least every time you use it. And you do have this uh, backspacer right here, right? So this backspacer uh, uh, in the back. <laughs> backspacer in the back, wow, fancy talk today. Uh, you have it in blue here, like an aluminum blue looking, so that kind of gives it a nice accent right there, uh, if you're into that. Lanyard hole, right, you got a big one right there in the back, right, which can be accessible from both sides, so that's very nice as well. The pocket clip is gonna be very deep carry, which is very nice also, right? So the entire knife should be able to tuck away when you put it in your pocket, which is very nice. All right, so you can see right there, no uh, portion of the knife should be showing, right? When you have these uh, pocket clip right here, very similar to the Centella, right? So I wanna say, yeah, uh, about the same length, right? And it gets the job done, it hides the knife very nice and the screen in the pocket. Uh, no jimping on this guy, so you can see there, there's no jimping going on at all on the top of the blade. And I wanna say for the same reason, right, for the same reason that the Ortis doesn't have jimping here, and for the same reason that the uh, fleece uh, folding knife doesn't have jimping either. So anytime you have some sort of thumb hole deployment, right, what I found, and this is not rocket science, but uh, especially for newbies out there, right, typically when you have some sort of thumb deployment, it's very hard to find jimping going on at the very top. It kind of weakens, kind of weakens that spot right there a little bit. So I, I've seen a lot of designers, knife designs that don't have any jimping whatsoever when the knife has some sort of thumb hole. Uh, maybe the only exception to that might be on the spider coes. Right, on the spider coats, you have some jimping, but up to a certain extent, right? So there's jimping up until you know where the circle starts, and yeah, there's no more jimping the rest of the way, so that way it doesn't make that steel uh, weaker. Let's not forget about the paper cutting test. I've been EDCing this guy already for a couple of weeks, so um, let's see how much of an edge it has retained. All right, look at that, just like back when it came out of the box. This guy is super duper sharp and for a tiny knife, right? And it's small, but mighty. Look at that. Nice, clean cuts all the way, right? Without hesitation. You guys be the judge right there. Oh, wait a second. There we go. Oh, wait, wait a second, wait a moment. Sometimes I feel like I don't, I don't catch the, the sheet of paper at the right angle. That may cause it to not cut well. But look at that, yeah, it definitely makes clean cuts, no doubt about that. Let's take a look at the blade alignment right there. It's definitely a little bit towards the right. Uh, yeah, definitely a little bit towards the right there. Uh, not necessarily 100% centered. I wonder if I can probably adjust that a little bit here. All right, went ahead and tightened it some more, and if anything, <laughs> it actually got closer to the right side than the left side, so let me go ahead and loosen it now. All right, went ahead and loosened it a little bit back to where it was, and as you can see, yeah, there's a little bit of uh, you know play in the blade, I guess. Yeah, it definitely steers towards the right a little bit, so not quite 
100% centered, if you will. That might be something specific to this knife and this knife only, right? Tined it only made it uh, way more disaligned. So I went ahead and kind of put it back to around where it was originally. So if that doesn't get on your nerves, then <laughs> you should be all right. So in conclusion, guys, this is a nice uh, little EDC for around $30. Typically goes on sale around $29.95 or so. I got this guy on special at Blade HQ for around $15, right, during the holidays. So you often find some specials like that out there, uh, some sales or special events like that where you could get it at a deep discount. I think full price is around $35 also. Make sure to check out the uh, links in the description. Uh, they do help out the channel at no extra cost to you. But yeah, overall, if you're looking for that small uh, factor, right, the conclusion is going to be very similar to the one from the Civivi Centilia, right? If you're looking for a small factor knife, right? Uh, probably a good secondary. If you're already carrying, uh, let's say a medium to larger knife as a primary, maybe you're looking for a specific smaller knife as a secondary, right? You definitely cannot go wrong with the CRKT Pete. So in answering the original question, is the CRKT Pete still a budget king this year? Guys, the answer is yes. For $15, you're probably not gonna get a better knife than this guy, right? This uh, Pete right here has so much going for it, right? Of course in that budget category you're getting a solid blade $15 I mean it's small it is uh, so easy to carry right and again <laughs> you're not really spending a ton of money here for all the reasons listed below or listed before this guy is a very solid budget option and yes it's still king this year and you should definitely try it yourself if you don't have one already or maybe you're considering getting one just just get your hand on one of these I mean you definitely can't go wrong and it's not gonna hurt the bank whatsoever because it's uh, so so affordable that is definitely my recommendation right there guys make sure to check it out let me know if I miss anything during the review right Right, guys let me know if there was anything specific that i missed that you would have loved to have seen during the review if you have any specific questions also let me know in the comments i'll be happy to answer those for you as well and anything you'd like to see in future reviews let me know by the way guys if you made it this far you guys are the real mvps um there's a possibility by the time uh, you're done watching this video that the review for the Sencut taxi is live in the channel this is a solid and very fidgety edc i'll put a card right here of that review is ready to go so you guys can watch that next thank you guys Thanks for uh, checking out the video here, making it this far. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.